What's up, YouTube? Today I wanted to take a step back and talk a little bit more about silver and gold and why I'm not selling just yet. Also, I'll actually be covering the pieces in the video because I'm sure that's what some of you are more interested in than any of my thoughts and more interested in the actual pieces in the pile. Just to be clear, I'm not actually selling anything just yet. I'm just organizing my stack and preparing it just in case there's any price spikes in the market where it makes sense to convert out into something else. Uh, in this case, it would be uh, either back into gold because the GSR ratio drops or into cash to put into the bank to get ready for some purchases in the real estate market. Because again, as mentioned in the last video, it takes three months for the cash to sit in there before uh, Otherwise, you need to have justification uh, that you need to write towards the bank. Lately in my past videos, I've also gotten a lot of flack for converting into fiat, but I think it's important to ask yourself, what is the purpose of your silver? Because if you just have it sitting somewhere, it does nothing. There's no end goal for it. It just You just become a hoarder and it serves no purpose. So for me, I've decided to give my silver a purpose and that is to either convert to gold or to purchase property. I also have some collectibles in my stack which are different and serve a different purpose, which is more for personal enjoyment and entertainment, like more, for, more or less for nostalgia. So I don't mind selling or not selling those and keeping those around while I move the other ones that have very little meaning to me uh, for, for something else. So if you are a stacker that just stacks to hold on to it, I'm totally cool with that, but just for me, uh, I have to have a purpose for it. So uh, the end goal is to really see if I, I can either store value or I can put that money to work so that it's generating income for me in the future. And my main priority in my 40s is for income generation rather than value storing. The way I value my work and savings has changed over time. In my 20s, I made very little and I was screwing around just spending money on frivolous things. In my 30s, I started to get real jobs, save, purchase my first property, and also start to invest a little bit more, thinking more towards the future. And now that I'm in my 40s, I'm looking more into investment properties and income generation to set up for my 50s. Because when you're in your 20s and 30s, you don't really think about your future, but once you're actually crossing the Rubicon into the middle middle age, then that becomes a little bit more serious. Throughout my 20s, 30s, and 40s, I've done startups where I either tried my own or I did it with uh, another group and I've had mixed results, but overall positive. I've uh, won more than I've lost. I've failed, so I understand what it means to fail and I don't like to fail, so I've learned from those mistakes. When it comes to silver and gold, I tend to document those here on YouTube, but when I make those mistakes in real life it, at work, I tend to tell those to the guys who work for me or work with me who I'm coaching as a senior engineer. So I hope that clarifies a little bit of why I do what I do, and I hope it uh, inspires you to look at your own journey and see where you are, where you've been, and where you're going. So with that said, I think we can continue on to the stack itself from the previous video where I showed a bunch of nice silver, but I didn't really talk about any of it. So the first lot is from the Royal Canadian Mint. And for a while, they were producing some of the best bars and coins on the market. And I've always wanted one because their 10 ounce bars, press bars, are some of the nicest looking on the market. And... Uh, here you can see there's a couple of eBay ones. Uh, for a while eBay was doing their own series for a few things uh, with the Royal Canadian Mint and had their own gold. I didn't get the gold but I did get the silver. It was a chance where I thought it would get uh, low low numbers plus Royal Canadian Mint so it was like a... You, you couldn't lose basically because it was a brand name. This next lot is uh, Sunshine Mint Bars. I got these from Atmex when they did a Reddit special for Spot. They used to do those a custom, uh, occasionally. Uh, now I'm not sure. Uh, this is also a uh, Reddit Spot deal with 5 ounces. 
Uh, for a while, AppMex was doing a lot of sales uh, for the Reddit community where they would give off give out a coupon code and that would offer a discount. And this is also what I used for the kilos in a, some videos a, a while ago. The average purchase price of all the silver that you're seeing has been between the price range of $13.50 and $20. Uh, these Sunshine Mint bars were roughly $16.50 to $17. And from there, these bars were also the go were either secondary market bars or picked up roughly between 16 and 17 as well. Uh, which is why I bought and sold some silver at the time. Whenever it spikes, you sell some, decrease the average cost of your current stack. Some people say you're selling, you're only selling for a few dollars profit. Well, if you do it over time, that adds up to several thousand dollars. Here are some Scottsdale 10 ounce stacker bars. Uh, they can be found on eBay. When they're on sale, they're 99 cents over spot. These are secondary market bars, so they aren't as pristine and can be found for spot. And these were acquired in the $15 range. You just have to find when people need to move it. Uh, next up are the Engelhard bars. I have a couple of different variants of the pillow bars. And then also a bull stamp bar, which is one of my favorite bars. I picked this up for about $18.50 an ounce back in the day. Uh, one of my favorite bars. This one I am not planning on selling at all. I do have a soft spot for angle hearts. I don't really collect them too much because of the premium, but this one, it's just so nice. It has a nice sheen on it considering how old it is. And uh, this, the other one, has a bit of a mirror finish to it, which is not really something that I see very often. So most of those angle hearts were, even the, the one ounces were roughly $17 to $18. Uh, when, at the time of purchase. I didn't really go pay any more than that for those. Uh, next up are the big Kit Kat bars. These are the Scottsdale uh, 20 ounce Kit Kats. These at the time you could have found them. I believe the cheapest that they were were $2.99 and that's when I jumped on a few of these at the time. Uh, they were also on sale for $3.29 at 99 cents over spot uh, back in the day and I just accumulated them. And of course, uh, the Silver Eagles. Some of you might have uh, had some of the modern coin mart deals where you could have gotten these for like $16.85 minus uh, some uh, incentives, which I think it brought down the average price to about $15 an ounce, 15 something an ounce for each American Silver Eagle. Uh, those of you who've been in the community a while will remember that. I actually picked up a couple tubes uh, from other people helping me do that. Looking back at this now, I kind of wish I standardized on a one to three types of silver because now it is a little bit more difficult to sell because there's so many different versions. Here you have the 2015-2016 Kangaroos, the Bay Precious Metals uh, exclusive and eventually the ones that went out. Uh, and also the 20. 15 Britannias that I wasn't a big fan of and again these are just bullion coins at this point so I don't attach any premium to them I don't have any intention of grading them so I don't care if I handle them with my bare hands otherwise I would be wearing gloves for coins that I would consider to have a high premium uh, these are the 10 ounce Johnson Matthew bars these are flatbacks and consecutive cereals I purchased these when spot was $20 and only for the flatbacks. The other ones I think were about $18, $19. So I have made some uh, higher end purchases, but it was few and far between. I paid spot when spot was for it. And at that time, my thought was that if I'm going to buy premium, I might as well buy it for spot. So if it does go down, I at least can sell it for what I paid for it. And that is still questionable today. Uh, for the non-flatbacks, I actually got those in a trade with some cash when I sold one of my Rolexes, which I was gonna. I'm still a little bit sad about because I sold it for about ten thousand, and now it was it's worth approximately seventeen, eighteen thousand for the Rolex BLNR. 
Uh, that's the Batman for those of you who know Rolex. Getting back to the silver coins, here are the Perth Mint coins again. And I've definitely made some mistakes in 2016 where spot jumped and I was continuing to purchase very heavily at the $20, $21 range. And I definitely learned from that. So this time around, I know when there are spikes is to slow down my purchases and to get things ready for sale because you can take an opportunity. And if you actually want to purchase coins, be very selective because a lot of things will come in, out on the market as spot moves up. So as a collector, now might be the time that you're looking for certain pieces and they will become available. But as a stacker, it's one of those times where you really have to think about whether you want to keep accumulating or whether you want to liquidate a little bit and take care of some of your bills issues or any debts that you might have. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. And be well, be prepared, and don't forget to test your preparations because it's not always going to work the first time you try it.